Lance always said that the biggest problem with Victor is that, you know, one of his lawyers described him as having narcissistic personality disorder, Mm. which is, of course, the last thing you really want in a drug dealer, right? Like, if you're, you know, Lance always says, like, you don't want your drug dealer to be having narcissistic personality disorder. He's just drawing attention to himself. And so, so Victor Conti was the guy running everything behind the scenes the the distribution of the steroids he was the one building relationships with athletes um and, th- and there's a couple sentences in the book that stood out to me when when describing victor conti and you guys wrote victor conti is kind of a power driven guy he gets in there and he likes to stir the pot victor has always uh victor was always the go-getter it, uh, always one scam or another and he was one of those guys who liked to play all angles and was good at it. So for people who aren't familiar with who Victor Conti was and, and how he had his grip and everything, who was the man Victor Conti? Where did he come from? Like, how is he building these relationships with superstar athletes, Barry Bonds, Marion Jones, Bill Romanowski? Like, how did he become the, the big hitter of Balco? I mean, I, I think, you know, Victor is, he's an amazing character. That's <laughs> what I always used to laugh. Like, you know, you just can't, you just can't make him up. Like he's, he's, he's almost too good to be true as a character to write about. Um, Victor grew up in, in Fresno in the Central Valley of California. He was a successful athlete in high school, a track star. And, um, but he, he was a kid who, who sort of always had, clearly designs on he had very charismatic guy um, designs on sort of finding a way to lead. He was clearly a guy who saw himself as a leader. Um, He was also a musician. He played bass um, and he tried to sort of make it as a, as a bassist at various points. And Mm. he even, you know, there's a point where he ends up, he's got a cousin who's in the band tower of power, which is a, a fairly famous Bay area band. And, um, and Victor sort of, finagles his way into the band and and these are this is a really you know popular long-standing band and the next thing you know victor is basically trying to like overthrow the band he's trying to become the leader and yeah. um this is sort of the mentality of who this guy was and and they they promptly there's a scene in the book where they basically just kick him out of the band and and uh, as he's as he's trying to make his move um but he he, he evolves into this guy. He's sort of this chameleon-like figure. Um, he revolves into this guy who um, gets into the, the supplement business in the early days of, of that industry. And, um, and he creates this sort of like whole idea that he can mastermind the specifics of what supplements you need to, to, uh, to make your body more effective, to perform at a more effective level, not just high level athletes, but anybody. Um, he spends a lot of time in the Stanford library reading about these substances and then ultimately also about steroids. And, and he evolves into this guy who he creates this idea that he's going to, he's going to do this thing where he, he measures the levels you have of certain vitamins and, in your body and he's going to tell you what you're missing. And Mm. inevitably what you're missing is this product that he has made, this zinc and magnesium product he's made. And he says, everybody needs it. Everybody needs more zinc and magnesium. And this is the way to, to survive. And he builds this industry and this is his legal industry. And what he does is a sort of ultimately a fairly traditional marketing move where he aligns himself with high profile athletes who will sort of sing the praises of his product called ZMA. Mm. But what he really does to take this to the next level and why he becomes a figure in our lives is that he aligns himself with these athletes and he becomes basically their steroid dealer. He ends up being their connection to a range of substances. And and in, in return, what they do for him is they market his legal product. And so basically, and sometimes they pay him. So there's a mixed bag of him getting money, of him in exchange for marketing. He's giving them a range of performance-enhancing drugs. And he's cocktailing these different kinds of drugs. He's connecting with certain people who have access to them. And um, and he's creating, in his mind, some of the greatest athletes in the world. And, in fact, is. 
you know, his his work with, you know, Tim Montgomery, for example, leads to mm. Montgomery becoming the world's fastest man. His work with Bonds clearly leads Bonds to become the home run king. Um, and it's in that context that you end up connecting with, with Victor. The one thing I'll say, and then, you know, Lance will probably have a bunch to add on Victor, but Lance always said that the biggest problem with Victor is that, you know, one of his lawyers described him as having narcissistic personality disorder, mm. which is, of course, the last thing you really want in a drug dealer, right? Like, if you're, yeah. you know, Lance always says, like, you don't want your drug dealer to be having narcissistic personality disorder. He's just drawing attention to himself. No, yeah, he was you- not a quiet guy. He he wanted to be celebrated for how good he was. Hey guys, this is a quick reminder that the two best ways you can support the show are by one, leaving a rating and comment on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. This is like foreplay for the algorithm because it revs it up and makes our show appear higher in searches. And number two, you can subscribe to Auxoro Premium at auxoro.supercast.com, where for five bucks a month you get bonus episodes and more exclusive content. Thank you for however you choose to support the show. You, you want a drug right. dealer who occasionally takes his own drugs if it's psychedelics, so he floods out his ego and he just wants to be good at his job and, and not be the, the star of the show. Victor would go to the, the great track meets in, in uh, the U.S. and Europe, and he became known as the man with the little black bag. And he'd sidle up to athletes and he'd say, you see how she's running? That's because she's yeah. working with me. You ought to work with me. And so this mm-hmm. is how Balco unravels. The other track coaches uh, know what's going on, and one of them gets a sample of one of the undetectable steroids he's distributing and gives it to the authorities, and away we went. Yeah, and he's such an interesting guy. The way, you know, the things that he was involved in and that profile – builds throughout the book because he had he had ties to the music industry he was in tower of power he was also in the supplement industry so he has the knowledge of chemical compounds to where he can probably oversee things you know tell what may make a good combination give directions to chemists and things like that but he's also creative and wants to be the star of the show so it's it's like this perfect storm this perfect whirlwind of personality traits that would allow you to like you're more than a the drug dealer to the stars it's like do you know how sometimes when an artist puts out a song and a producer will be on the song but you most of the time you'll just see the artist's name i feel like in a in a way victor conti was like the producer putting his name as the star of the song like the the performer the the person writing the melodies, the person who was writing the lyrics, like he wanted to be involved in everything and be seen as this guy who like, yeah, look at me, like Barry Bonds, he's an extension of me. Like I am creating him, like almost like painting Barry Bonds, like all these brush strokes with the the performance enhancing drugs. Yeah. A combination no, mad scientist, no. marketing guru, uh, and uh, wants all yeah. the credit. Yeah, he and they, they with Montgomery, you know, they literally created a a, a thing they called Project World Record. Mm. The whole thing was designed like we're going to create Tim Montgomery and turn him into a world record holder. And integral to that, of course, was the drugs. And and they were, I think, incredibly proud of the idea that they could tout that they had created Montgomery. Who, um, who, that was a all who went on to win the hundred meter world record.